Well, welcome, Xavier. Uh, that was Hello. a wonderful, wonderful film that you did. And I was very excited to see that it was selected for the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. This is such a powerful film, an, an incredible story of a Kurdish Syrian woman, Leela Mustafa, who was elected mayor of Raqqa when she was just 30 years old. It seems unbelievable. How, how did this come to be? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, we cannot imagine this situation in Raqqa. I mean, uh, everybody heard about Raqqa because it was the, the capital of the Islamic State. And uh, then uh, we see some very horrible things about this town. And so we cannot imagine that after the war, a woman could be elected as the mayor. And so this is a very big surprise about, about this story. <laughs> yeah, it just, it seems impossible that it could happen. It's just so dramatic. Yeah, it's like, you know, in the Middle East, we have a lot of cliche and uh, the main things that we see uh, is, is the war, I mean, and we cannot see so much things beyond the war. And uh, so I think I was very interested to do this movie to show uh, that we, we, we can, the situation is, is not good at all in Syria, the, the country is in a very bad situation, but we still always have to keep hope and we still need to encourage the, the people to try to give hope. And mm -hmm. so Leila Mustafa is, is one of them. She is a very young woman. She is a woman from Raqqa. She is uh, Kurdish. Um, and uh, she, but Raqqa is mainly Arabs, but she's born in Raqqa. She uh, studied in Raqqa. So she's really a, a girl of Raqqa and she loves her town. And so now she tried to rebuild the town. And, and this is very surprising. <laughs> now, tell me, how did your journey begin on this film? It's uh, began with a hazard, with a hazard actually, because uh, if you read the newspaper, uh, we don't have so much information about uh, Leila Mustafa. You know, it's, it's a tragedy because everybody heard about Raqqa and we saw the war in Raqqa, but when the war is finished, we don't have anything more. We don't have any news more of, of Raqqa, you see? So we keep only the war. And so nobody knows so much about this girl, about uh, Leila Mustafa. And uh, I, I, I was shooting another film in Erbil, in Kurdistan, uh, two years ago. And I met a guy who just came back from Raqqa and he spent only half a day because he could not stay in Raqqa for security reasons. And he spent half a day in Raqqa. And I met him in, in Erbil, uh, in the Kurdis, Iraq uh, Kurdistan. And um, he said to me, oh, I met this girl. I just come from Raqqa. And you know what? I met this young girl, 30 years old girl, and she's the mayor of Raqqa, the co-mayor, because there is a guy also, the co-mayor of Raqqa, and she tried to rebuild her, her town, and, and maybe if, if you want, you should have interest of, of her. And he said to me that he wants to send a journalist to write a book on her. So I said to him, oh, but if you send somebody, please tell me, and I will try to follow this, this journal, and it's what happens. And maybe one month after, she sent her to the East and I joined her and together we, 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 we go from Erbil in Iraq and through the border to arrive uh, in, in, uh, in Syria and in Raqqa and we spent uh, nine days with uh, Leila Mustafa. Now this journalist's name was Maureen De Tilly. Yes. Exactly. And, and she had the idea to write a book about Leila. Yeah, it's, it's very, 
uh, original story because she decided to write a book and I decided to do a film. But both of, both of us, we, we didn't have any information of, about <laughs> Leila Mustafa. Mm -hmm. And so before to go there, we didn't know what will happen uh, during this uh, journey, yeah. journey because the, the security, security situation was not good at all. Uh, we know that we could spend nine days maximum in uh, Raqqa, but we didn't know in Raqqa what we will do with her. And we will know, we didn't know if this woman would be very interesting, you see, uh, as a character. We didn't know all that. But we plan to do a thing, we plan to do a book, and we plan to come back without anything. I mean, it, it was just to try something. And we were ready to come back without have anything, you see? So right. actually, we come back with a lot of things. <laughs> it was very, very rich, rich experience. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, was she nervous at all about the collaboration, about being filmed and followed by a camera? Not at all, actually. Um, um, so um, she, she was very, very busy. And uh, we were not uh, her priority, you see. And so it was funny because she welcomed us uh, very warmly, and she was very kind, very nice woman. Uh, and she paid attention, attention a lot uh, to us, but we were not her priority. She has, you know, Raqqa is it's, it's, it's a town of wounds. All the town is break down. It's uh, 30,000, 300,000 people, uh, 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 town break down completely, you see, and so her job is huge. <laughs> and so us, we were nothing compared to what we have, what, right. what she has to do every day, you see. So we try to uh, to to focus on her schedule, schedule, and try to do some few things uh, when she had some few role. In, the, in her school, you see? And, and, and so we spent nine days like this. <laughs> well, it was very powerful cinematography. At, when you show us a city that's in ruins that looks like a skeleton, but you also see kids playing and people walking in the streets and reclaiming their home. What were some of the challenges of getting access to this city of ruins? Um, we can before to 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 go there. We could not imagine what 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 uh, what spectacle. What what is it to see this? I mean, me, I I, I never saw this kind of landscape, and I never saw a so much a so big town uh, completely uh, break down in in ruins. You see, so it's when you arrived in Raqqa, when we arrived, it was really a shock to, to see this. I mean, everywhere when you look around, it's, it's all breakdown. There is no one house which not have any impact or hole uh, from, from a bomb, you see? Um, and so this, we don't get used to see this, uh, this kind of uh, images. So it's a, uh, it's a real shock. But what I wanted, because I saw uh, some report about Raqqa, but that they're all showing the same. They're showing the ruins and they're showing the, the people who lost everything. And they're all saying, oh, there are ruins, uh, there are poor people, there is everything, and there is no hope. It's, it's absolutely horrible. And I, I, I didn't want to show this. I wanted to show that behind the, the ruins, there are always people and to try to get life, you see, and to try to get a future and to try to get a hope. And this girl, this woman, it's, uh, she, she tried to, to give to her people some, 
little hope, you see, to because you have to continue to live anyway, even if you lost, lost your house, if, if you lost your family, you have to try to live, you see, you have to try to get a future. And this is what I want to, I want, I wanted to focus on this, mainly, you see. Mm -hmm. Well, you did a great job of that, but Thank you. The, the first thing that you notice is that there's guns everywhere walking down the street, you see guns. But what's beautiful about the film is you don't dwell on the danger. But, but did you feel need for caution when you were there? Yes, of course. It's, uh, this is why we, didn't, we could not spend more than nine days because after after a few days, everybody knows that there are, there, there are some strong. It was uh, about two years ago. Now the situation is, is, is better. But at that time, uh, so if you stay longer, uh, the, the people, they know that there are some stranger. And so you, don't, you never know if they have some extremists uh, who, who, who could doing something with you, I mean. So uh, we were dependent of the security of uh, the the, um, uh, the civil uh, the the, uh, the 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 mile, and um, and so uh, we have we had to, to trust also the we have security with with us and we had to trust them because when you are foreigner like this you you. you it's very difficult to feel the danger. I mean, it's, it's not the war, the, the, the war is, is finished. So you don't have the army, you don't have, you see, the battle, etc. So it, 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 it's calm. And so you, it's difficult to feel the danger when it's calm. And it, it, this is what was a little bit stressful. And also we know that um, Leila Mustafa, she 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 is a she, she take risks. I mean, she is in danger. She 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 take risks, and and so when we spend time with her in her car, uh, going around in her car, uh, sometimes it was quite a little bit stressful because we know that the extremist groups, if they want to uh, to shoot someone, it would it would be her. And we could be with her at this time. So this, this is why we stay nine days, but not, not, not one day more. <laughs> That's amazing. And I'm very happy that you did include the one year later in the closing. But what, what is Leela doing now? Are you still in contact with her? Yes, I'm still in contact with her. We, we talk together uh, uh, regularly and um, she, she is still there. Uh, the, the, you know that the Kurdish, they have a very uh, new systems with uh, uh, a man and a woman at the head uh, of uh, the, 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 the Mary. And um, the civil council, and so uh, the man, the, the, she had uh, maybe three co-mayor uh, changing, but her she stayed, she's still there, and uh, uh, I mean she's working a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and uh, she tried to organize kind of democracy there. And she is a very, um, I don't know how to put a sorry because my English is very, it's not very You're good. doing well. Doing but but, but uh, she, uh, she can have the trust of the people. I mean, uh, I mean, if they are Arabs, if they are Kurds, if they are Muslim, if she are Christians, etc., uh, she is very uh, respectful, respected. As a, as a woman, you see, uh, by the men, by the woman. And, uh, and so she's, she did a great job. And she is an engineer, you see. It's, 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 so this is why they chose her so to rebuild the, the town, because she is an engineer. So as an engineer, she is everywhere. 
she is working as she can to try to rebuild this town. Well, I've heard rumors that this is the first part of a trilogy that is going to come out. Can you tell us a little bit about what, how, what's going to develop? What can we expect to follow? Yes, this is true. Uh, I'm, I'm working now on the second and the third uh, film. It's uh, um, a trilogy about the, the way to uh, rebuild uh, the, the bond between uh, society, between people, uh, with three experiences. Uh, political experience one, this is uh, nine days in Raqqa. Um, experience with media. I'm doing a film about a radio in Erbil in the in Iraq, uh, in the Kurdistans, and it's a radio um, uh, uh, who try to uh, give the voice to everybody. And uh, the radio has journalists from different community, so Muslim, uh, Christians, uh, Yazidi, and they're all working together. And the third one is uh, to rebuild the bond between society through culture. And so I'm doing a film about the um, uh, library of uh, the University of Mosul. You saw, uh, and Mosul, she is the, the, the town of Mosul in Iraq. Uh, they, they have some terrible time or so. And the, the library of the big university of Mosul has been uh, burned by uh, ISIS. And now they are rebuilding the library. So I'm doing, I uh, follow the, the rebuild of the library and I tell the story of the students around the library, you see. And the students, they are very um, interested because uh, they, they, they think that the education and the culture is the main war uh, against uh, the extremism. And the, the experiences, you see, they, they, they had now an experience of the extremism. And so they know how the education can be a war against that. So it's three films about three experiences, politics, media, and culture yeah. to rebuild the society. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> how far are you along? How far? Yeah. I mean, how, how much have you done on this? Uh, uh, you, you mean that when it will be ready? Yeah. Ah. At uh, what stage is the production at? Oh, uh, so the, the Al Salam is about the radio is, uh, will be ready uh, uh, in the uh, beginning of uh, 22, you see? And I expect to finish the third one at the end of the year 22. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wonderful. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a very nice experience. I mean, it's a way to uh, um, it's a way to to have a vision of uh, what happened after the war. You see, uh, what happened after Daesh in Syria and in uh, Iraq. Uh, it's a way to tell us so some story on a different way that than the media uh, usually does. Yeah. See? And uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, something uh, different. <laughs> yeah, but it's something that's in progress. It's always unfolding. So it, I imagine it's very difficult to know what form it's going to take. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, this region in the Middle East, you, you never know what will happen one month after. And so you have to manage your project with, with this. And so uh, we have an idea, but after we, we need to adapt as uh, in, in, in for nine days in Raqqa, for example, as I said, I, I didn't know really what, what will happen during these nine days. And I didn't know if I would, I would come back with some picture or whatever. You know, we, we thought that maybe the situation, the security situation was not good. And we thought that maybe we will stay in the office with uh, Leila and, and we could not go outside because the situation is not safe. 
And so she would not allow us uh, to go in town and take some picture in the town and, and go around. You see, we, we were prepared for that. And, uh, but actually it, it didn't happen like this. She was uh, very um, uh, happy that because nobody came at that time to Raqqa and she was uh, very, very happy to welcome us. And she wanted to show to us her town. And so uh, she said to us, no, you have, you have to go in town and you have to take some picture in town and you have to show to the world what happened here in Raqqa to his town, you see. So actually, I, I, I could do a lot, but I didn't know that before. And for, for the other film, it's, it's, it's the same. And now there is the pandemic situation, you see. So, so we thought we, that we, could, we would have some problem with the security situation, but actually it's not the security situation, it's the pandemic situation, which is a problem now. It's in, in the Middle East and in, uh, in Iraq uh, too, and in Mosul too. So it's, it's quite difficult to manage this kind of project. But we, we, uh, we, we, we have to be prepared to, to take time. You know? and, and this is maybe the, the big difference, big, big difference. I mean, I'm not a journalist, I'm a cinematographer. And as a cinematographer, um, I, I like to take time. You see, I think when you are a journalist, you don't have so much time to do a report. Your, your, the, the, the media order you a report, you have to do it and you have one day, two days, three days to do it. But for the documentary films, you, you, you need to have time, you see, and you need to adapt and you need to observe the situation and to, 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 to be on the, on the truth. Right. You can't be rigid, you have to be flexible. Yeah, you have to. And in, in this kind of country of whether the political situation, the security situation is, is never very good. I mean, uh, you have to be careful, of course, and, and you have to, to, to adapt also. And, uh, and the people in, uh, in, in Iraq, they, they are very, um, I mean, they, they like this kind of project because they are quite fed up to be seen as people who, who are doing war, you see. Uh, and and they, they, they want to, to be seen uh, differently. So yeah. as, as real people, normal people who want peace, they, many of them, most of them, they're, they're, really, they're really fed up of this situation. They're fed up of the war. You see, it's so difficult. They all have difficult lives. And, and, and so they are happy to see when we have projects to, to show them as the normal people who want peace, who want to improve their life, who, who want to improve the culture, you see. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very rich, this project. We create some very rich relationships with uh, those people. But you have to take time. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I appreciated about this yeah. film, because it did show us a side that we don't see in the media. And we see hope. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even, even if it's, it's, it's a very teeny hope, I mean, you see, uh, we, we don't have to expect too much, but uh, often I, I hear that because the, the hope is teeny, you, you, you don't have to focus on this. You see, it's not so important. Yes, of course it is important. Even if the hope is very little, if it's very teeny, of yeah. course you have to focus on it and you have to show it. And it's a way to make it, uh, to, to, to encourage, it and to make it bigger you see yeah well you did a wonderful job on this <laughs> and my question now is how will other we we really are very proud to have this in our film festival but now how can other people see it when is it coming out into the world uh we 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 uh, we, we released the film in France. I mean, we wait for now maybe uh, six months to release the film in France. You see, we should release the film before because after Cannes Festival, you know, the last year, the, the, the Cannes they, they didn't happen, but, but they did a selection and the film was in the selection and we were very, very proud of that. 
very happy for, for that. But after that, we 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 waited to um, to release the film in the in the theater in France, but all the theater are closed. So yeah, <laughs> we cannot release the film now. But we expect we're waiting for the reopening of the theater. And as yeah. soon the theater are opening, we will release the, 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 the film in France. You see, and and I hope. After that, uh, we have an international seller, and we hope to release, release the film also uh, uh, abroad, of course. And, and, and I'm, very, I'm very glad, I'm very happy that the Duck Lens and the festival selected, has selected the, the film, because it is, it's a way to, uh, to introduce the film abroad. Right. <laughs> and hope for broadcast. Yes, hope to broadcast, but, but this is, a big point now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So hope the situation will be better, and uh, and then uh, it's uh, because this this film, of course, we want to broadcast on on the platform on the television. But um, me, I like the cinema, and so I want to broadcast this kind of film on 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 the theater on the cinema. You see, so we plan to do that. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Xavier. It's just a, a powerful and uplifting film. And looking forward to the next two parts of the trilogy, and hopefully we can have you appear live in our yes. movie theaters <laughs> and yeah. we can have to talk like this. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I would be very glad to. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.